Hello, my name's Laverne, and I'm making this video for two sets of brothers and sisters of mine. First being uh, those who are of the faith, Christian brothers and sisters, but also for those people who are struggling with addictions, maybe in and out of the rooms of rehab, uh, in the rooms of like NA, AA, GA, which is Gamblers Anonymous, if people aren't sure. And this is really where my message is going out to. Uh, I'm hoping it will reach you know the ears of people who are struggling with addiction and I want to talk about how Christ can help you I want to tell you first off that I've been there I've been through the rooms if you were to look at the icon on my uh, you know my home page uh, it pretty much describes my life you know as they say a picture is worth a thousand words uh, it was pretty much my life before coming to find Christ so I know the rooms well I know the sayings like, uh, hey, if I'd only seen myself coming, I could have avoided the situation. Which is basically saying I'm my own worst enemy. And I, you know, that certainly was the case with me. I come from, you know, my family, my parents and that were Christian. My, all my brothers and sisters were. They accept, you know, stayed in the faith in that. But at a very early age, around 12, 13, I stopped believing. I absolutely did not believe. I knew I was an atheist then, and and all through my life I fought against the idea. I, I know I could put up with my family, but I didn't like Christians. I didn't like the Bible thumper, and I debated them, and and all that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know how many times I gave God the finger. You know, gave him the double bird. Uh, way too many times. Uh, but that's that's behind me now, and I, I want to talk about how, even though the rooms of NA and that are supposed to be a spiritual program, that if you talk too much about Christ, you can actually get kicked out. If you are unwilling to buy into the concept that once an addict, always an addict, you can get kicked out. There's a couple of mine, or a, a couple who are friends of mine. They've been going to the rooms for four or five years, you know. They well known in the rooms and that kind of thing. But they found Christ and uh, believed that they were cured. Believed that in Jesus Christ they had been delivered of their addictions and that they were free and clean of it. And so they would go to the rooms and they would say, "No, I'm such and such. I am no longer an addict. I am such and such." I've been delivered of my problem of addiction. And uh, what happened is, other people in the rooms didn't like this. They went against what the big book says, you know, once you're an alcoholic, you always are. It's a disease you can never be cured from. So they went to the World Organization, these people, and they came back, and this couple was told that they were no, walk, no longer welcome in the rooms. They were told that they could come to birthday celebrations and to any... Uh, open you no, know, open rooms but they could not come to any closed meetings they could, they could come to open meetings but not closed ones and so they were you know kicked out and a, a valuable resource gone simply because they didn't accept you know that lie that I will always be an addict or I'll always be a criminal I'll always be this person it'll always be in my blood and there's nothing I can do about it. I have to live with it. And so I have to keep coming to these rooms. I have to keep my sponsor. I have to keep doing these things if I want to stay clean. Uh, and it's too bad. But I want to tell you as well about another saying I believe in. I believe this wholeheartedly. And that is that the most dangerous person in the world is someone who has nothing to lose. I wholeheartedly believe this. And I'm sure if you've been in the rooms or any length of time, you know where I'm coming from, that when you have nothing to lose, you would do the most outrageous things. You would do things that, you know, you thought a line was drawn and you'd never cross it. You cross that line and you think there's another one in front of you. Man, there's just no way I would ever do that. But then what happens? You end up crossing it. And you end up being in such a low spot and doing things you never, you know, never would have thought possible and it's because you have nothing to lose so I'll say if you, 
wouldn't it be nice to have somebody that can have your back 24-7, can be with you all the time, and you know it can't be your sponsor, you know it's not your spouse. For you have all those things, and yet you still sneak up on yourself and take you out for uh, what could very well be your last relapse, where we all know that the next one could be the last one. So I want to say, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to have that blood transfusion to have new blood in you that completely eradicates that disease? Wouldn't it be nice to have somebody with you 24-7 to have your back that you can never sneak up on yourself like you have in the past? And wouldn't it be nice to have something of so much of value, such great value, that you would never do anything to lose it and you would do everything in your power to keep it? Wouldn't it be nice to stop being the most dangerous person to your loved ones, to your family, to your neighbor, and to yourself? Wouldn't that be something? no longer a danger to yourself or to your loved ones. Well, I can tell you, you can't get that from anything of this world. There's nothing of that value. You can't even get that kind of value on a person because people leave for one reason or another, whether it's in death, whether it's uh, you know, an affair, uh, a relationship just breaks up, people move away. So you can't, if you place your value on those things, you can still lose it and you can once again go back to that spot where you have nothing to lose. I tell you there is only one person who can give you that blood transfusion, can give you a new heart, who can have your back 24-7 and can be of such great value that you would do everything to hang on to it and nothing to lose it. You would simply never risk losing it. And that person, that thing is Jesus Christ. I'm a testament to it. I've been through it. I know I've been delivered, I've been set free and clean, I've been given that transfusion, that regenerated heart, and I can tell you it is wonderful. So I ask if you are in and out of the rooms, or, or maybe you're clean but you're not serene, you're that dry alcoholic who, who through sheer willpower has stopped picking up, but you're not happy, and you know it, and, and there's people who even tell you, man, I wish you'd go back to drinking. You were so, At least when you were drinking, you weren't miserable all the time. So I ask you just to start asking questions if you're a non-believer, an unbeliever, or if you you know, went to church but then found you know, it still didn't work for some reason. I ask that when Jesus knocks on that door to open it up and not just you know, let them into the foyer and then say thank you for dropping by and let them go. Invite them in for dinner. Invite them in to make a clean sweep of the house. To kick that devil out that... He's not anywhere in your life whatsoever. Invite Jesus so he is the main focus of your life. And I'm telling you, he will do wonderful things for you. Things that, you know how you were saying you'd never do a certain thing, you never step across the line? Well, he'll get you doing things that you never thought possible, things you never dreamed of, but in a good way. Not in the way that took you out and made you an addict. So I just ask you to start asking questions about Christ. Maybe find a church to get plugged into a, a same kind of home group that you might have with, uh, you know, in NA, but instead of NA, it's a home group with your church, doing a Bible study kind of thing. I just ask you to check it out. Uh, well, God bless. Have a good day. You know, peace.